Hi, my name is Mika and I'm working on a game called Mushy Score. Mushy Score is a 2D platformer where you fight against endless wave of enemies for a high score. In this video, I will tell you about the journey working on a Mushy Score for one year and getting it close to release. And I will also give you four takeaways from this journey. It all started in December 2020 when I realized that my dream game is not the best game to start development. I had worked on it about four years and realized that the game had no direction. I needed to change something if I actually wanted to release a game and become a full-time game developer. At the time, I was still working as an IT consultant, so I had to balance the game development and work. I decided that I will create something smaller, something that I could release much faster. So I took inspiration from my first game that I ever made. It was made with Game Maker and it was a super simple game where you fight against endless waves of enemies and try to reach to the end. The game had terrible graphics, physics are horrible and the game is super challenging for any normal person. But it was my first game and I created that while I was 12 and barely could read English. I wanted to recreate that game. I know that the game has potential because it has similar ideas to the Vampire Survivals and I had not seen similar games currently in the market. After choosing the game idea, I hit another crossroads. What to use for the game development? I had been using Unity over 5 years and I was very familiar with it. But with the recent issues with the Unity, I was not sure if that would be a good choice. I thought of Godot but decided to go with the mono game since I wanted to try creating my own game engine. In hindsight, this was a good and a bad choice at the same time. Using mono game made the game development much slower but I clearly dodged a bullet with Unity. Learning Monogame gave me a lot of future proofing and taught me a lot of skills. Start of the development was hard since I had to become familiar with the new game engine, but over time it sped up when I created new systems and workflows to help my development. I got the basic movement and physics working and made it feel like a game. I needed a team for the game and I decided to go with the mushroom character. The character is the same as one of the enemies in the game that I originally worked on. I also added other enemies from my previous game. Since I have no art skills, I decided to hire an artist. He made some assets and the game started to actually look good. I shared the game in some local events and got positive feedback. The gameplay loop was simple but fun. I sometimes played my game too long instead of developing it. Now that I had the base of the game ready, I needed to do the steps to becoming a real game company. I created my business, Bahtimo Games, and realized that creating a business was surprisingly easy. Now I've completed one of my dreams, to have my own game company. Now all I needed to do is make it profitable. With my new game company, I created a Steam page and shared it around in hopes of getting wish lists. This was a slow process, especially since I didn't want to use popular sites like Reddit or Twitter because I didn't like where they were going. I decided that I will try to make some devlogs to share the progress because there are not that many monogame devlogs and maybe people are interested in that. I realized that having a full-time job made it hard to focus on the development and if I truly wanted to commit making games, I should leave my job. So I did. Month after leaving the job was stressful and I had hard time getting the flow for the development. Many days I was wondering if I did the right decision and should I go back to my job. Uncertainty of the game development was taking toll on me. After sharing my game in our local IGDA event, I got a lot of positive feedback which helped me to get more motivated. Progress of the game was going well and I released a demo for Steam Next Fest where I gained a lot of wish lists. This showed me that the game has a lot of potential if I focus on the game. I created better routines for the game development and started tracking my progress. I created a clear plan what I need to do to get the game released and followed that. For the start of the development, it's better to not have a plan, but in the end of the development, you should have a plan or else you will develop your game forever. All these things really improve my mental health. Now my game is close to release and all it needs are some final polishing touches. If you're interested in the game, go give it a wishlist in the Steam and try out the demo. What are my takeaways with this journey? Number one, follow your dreams. Sometimes you never know where it leads. I had enough savings and I knew I could get back to my previous job if I wanted to. For me, it was safe to try out the game developer for one year. I had always wanted to be a full-time game developer and now it was better time than ever. Number two, share your game and get feedback. Comments from other people will help you to improve your game and it is also great for your mental health to get support from other people. If you have a local game dev community, 
I highly recommend joining it. Number three, have tools that are secure. My choice of mono game saved me a lot of stress. I cannot imagine the panic that other developers felt when Unity decided to change their monetization system. Using open source tools can be helpful and I recommend using them whenever possible. Number four, have a plan for release. If you don't have a plan, there's a risk that you will develop your game forever. This is my first game and I know I cannot make it perfect. Sometimes you just need to release your game. Thank you for watching this video. Feel free to leave a comment to share your own game dev journey. I hope this was inspirational for you. See you in the next video. Bye.